All right, we got one person. We're off to a slow start here. Where is everybody? The Ed. 8.0% alcohol by volume. So, Big J here, checking in from my hotel room. I've got all day and all day tomorrow off. I do not climb back into the truck until Monday morning. So, just cracked my first beer. Couldn't wait till noon. Ah, is that good? Yeah, Detroit Diesel. That's what kind of engine I have in my truck, you clown. So, the DD15 is the name of the model. That's why I'm Detroit Diesel 15.0. It's actually a 14.7 liter, but they call it the DD15. It's about the size of three Mustang engines, Dale. So, what do you guys think? With no barbershops open during this coronavirus outbreak, I had to tighten up the sides with my beard trimmer. Shaved the beard a little bit. Got, got the neck with the razor. Big J's all cleaned up. Washed my ass with a soapy washcloth. Yeah, dude, one thing about not getting a haircut, you can at least take care of the sides so you don't start to get bushy on the fucking sides. Got the Delray Misfits lineup shirt on. Big Richard, Brad, Andrew, myself, Big Lenny. I don't know why Pomps made this in navy fucking blue. This shirt should be black. Pomps. And then Pomps sent me my Detroit Diesel. I'm sorry, my bedroom bully trucker t-shirt with the semi on it. He sent me that shirt in black. That shirt should be navy blue to match the truck. Fuck, Pomps. So anyway, Big J, I'm resting before my last set. Any advice? Yeah, do a line of cocaine. Or do a key bump with some methyl trend. Mm. Look how I'm sitting. This is how Big Rob stares at his life when he has no followers. <clears throat> I look pretty healthy today. Uh, wait till later. Wait till a Wait till about three hours from right now when the wheels are falling off the fucking wagon.
thoughts on Pelosi telling New Yorkers to go to the Chinese parade a few weeks ago. Um, you know, the thing with this, with this goddamn coronavirus is, remember, hindsight is always twenty twenty. So everybody's an expert now that we know what the fuck is happening. Um, I personally think we should have handled the thing like Sweden. Um, Sweden did not shut down their economy. Sweden asked the elderly and the vulnerable citizens, like people with weak immune systems, for example, to please stay at home. Everybody else went about business as usual. That's how you build your herd immunity. So, what Nancy Pelosi said may sound idiotic, um, and, it, and, and she's an idiot, even though she is an intelligent woman. Um, I, I, stupid things like parades, concerts, sporting events, um, those don't need to reopen. That's just unnecessary large gatherings of people. Okay? Um, but I think we need to get everybody back to work. Um, this thing is peaking right now. I believe in the United States of America, 2,000 people died of the coronavirus in the last 24 hours. And for about the past week, it, it's been stable at like right around 1,000. So today, I believe it doubled and hit 2,000. And I think it, it might go up a little. I don't think it's going to double again. I don't think it'll be 4,000 tomorrow morning um, because we are doing a good job of social distancing and all that other nonsense. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's, it's peaking right now. And I think keeping people at home on Easter Sunday instead of going to jam-packed churches, and then going out to brunch after Easter Mass, jam-packed restaurants. We're going to, this thing is going to be on its heels come Monday morning, Tuesday. Because it's peaking right now. And nobody's going to Easter Mass. No one's going to Easter brunch. Basically, we're, 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 we're punching this thing in the face this weekend. It's at its peak. And everybody is staying home on one of our peak holidays for church and for fucking Sunday brunch and Easter supper. Okay? The, this thing's going to get punched in the fucking face. Um, so I think we're going to be okay. But now back to what I was saying about Sweden. We should have never shut down our schools, Okay? Little fucking crumb crunchers or booger eaters, they're not, they're not dying from this thing. We should have kept the kids in school and let the kids keep, you know, be swapping germs because all the kids that would have got the virus, not even known they had it, maybe had a runny nose and then recovered, they would have had the fucking antibodies. And that would have helped out our herd immunity. And if you guys don't know what herd immunity is by now, you, you must be an ostrich with your head in the sand. Herd immunity is what crushes a virus. Uh, so basically by everyone's self-quarantine, we've, we've made our herd weaker. Um, so I think we need to get back to work. Um, I, 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 if the president waits until May 1st, I'm going to be really disappointed because I think come the middle of next week, um, we're going to have the, the COVID-19 on the ropes. Um, but I don't, from what I've heard on the radio, there won't be another concert in 2020. Um, and that's a good thing. We, we, you know, I just want to go out to have some fucking eggs and sit down at a restaurant. I don't need to go to a concert. And as much as I love sports, I don't need to go to a goddamn sporting event right now. You know, those are just unnecessary. I think we should just open up businesses and everybody get back to work. And 
the elderly, you know, let's all just stick together and help out the elderly. Let them stay at home. And, and if you, you know an elderly person, offer to get their groceries for them. You know, the elderly and the people with weak immune systems need to stay home. But the rest of us need to get the fuck back to work. So that's that. And this whole mask thing is so fucking stupid. I I personally think I had the coronavirus in February when I had a fever and then I had a cough for two weeks. Um, because usually when I have the flu, it's it's usually in it's usually in my in, uh, I'm either puking or I'm shitting. It's usually either or both. It's usually upper GI or lower GI where the flu virus fucking hits me. I did not throw up once and I did not have diarrhea once. It was just a fever and then a nasty cough. So I think I had it. So I think I'm carrying around the fucking antibodies. So... That's how you beat this thing. Like someone like myself who has the antibodies, let's say that virus lands on me. And then I happen to use the restroom and then I wash my hands. The virus is gone. See? The more people that get it and the more people that recover, the virus has less places to land. Okay? When we all quarantine, the minute we go back out, the virus has more places to land. Now, I'm not saying go pack a fucking NBA basketball arena or go pack a fucking NHL ice arena. In fact, I think an ice arena uh, would probably be about the most dangerous place in the world right now, going to see a, uh, an NHL playoff game. Uh, that would be stupid. But we can we can get back to work, you know. Restaurants restaurants can cut their capacity. You know, if, if the if the fire marshal, you know, everyone's seen those signs on the wall at a restaurant where it says capacity one hundred fifty people, whatever. Restaurants maybe we do maybe we do a soft opening where. We start out, restaurants are going to start out at 75 or 50% capacity. You know, let's just seat every other table. Um, and gyms, gyms should be open because gyms are where healthy people go. People that exercise, people that get plenty of rest. People that take fucking supplements, people that drink plenty of water, um, people that are, are clean, people that shower. Gyms should be open. Gyms is where we would have really, really helped out our herd immunity. Um, you think, you know, your average gym person is so much more healthy than, than your average, and I'm talking like a regular gym goer, someone that goes maybe... I'll say even someone that goes to the gym two, three times a week, not even a nutcase. Maybe someone that just goes twice a week. You know, maybe, maybe you know, those, you know, those Monday night warriors that bench press every Monday night, and then they might make it in the gym one more time before the weekend. Even those people are a, a lot healthier than the average person, a lot healthier. And they're only hitting the gym twice a week. Um, so we need to get people back in the gyms because, um, look, I'm a truck driver. I've been, a, since this thing's been going on, I've been across the country and I've, I've been stopping at all these different truck stops and I haven't been to a truck stop yet that's had a problem with, with with shortages of employees because they got sick. Okay? If this thing was something to really be afraid of, 
wouldn't all the truck stop employees be sick? Think about it. The truck stops are still open. And you got dirty, smelly, unhealthy truckers coming in there breathing and coughing. Your average truck driver doesn't exercise. Your average truck driver probably smokes. Um, your average truck driver is dehydrated, running on coffee. Okay, we're, we're, we're not a healthy breed of people. Truck drivers are probably the complete opposite of your average gym goer. The only thing that might keep truck drivers a little healthier than the average American is, um, with the exception of myself, I, I think a lot of truck drivers don't abuse alcohol because they're DOT regulated employees. I think that's the only thing that keeps a lot of truck drivers alive is, is, is they're not alcoholics. They're running on coffee and cigarettes and fucking fast food. But there's not a problem at the truck stops. They're all still open. So it's time for everybody to get back to work. Restaurants and gyms um, are, are, are the two things that I want open the most. Fuck, I'm so sick of eating meals in my goddamn truck. Ugh. I can't eat it. I can't eat a sandwich in my meal in my truck without getting something on my shirt. I can't. That's why one reason I don't wear white. If I put on a white shirt, I will I will stain it within an hour. Uh, I'm just one of those people that can't wear white. I ruin white clothes. Um so it's time to get back to work. We're Americans. We don't put our head. You know, that makes us look pretty shitty when, when, you know, Americans are at home hiding like fucking cowards and the fucking Swedes of all people said, you know what? Fuck this. We're going to keep our economy open. The Swedes nailed it. And I'm not a big ass kisser of Sweden, but they fucking nailed it. They absolutely nailed it. Good for Sweden. So, and, and, and when it comes to opening up businesses, um, I think, I, I know for, from personal experience, it seems like every time I catch a cold and I wake up sick, I was at the bar the night before or the night before that. Usually when I wake up with the common cold, I'd been at a bar the previous 48 hours. And and a lot of you, if you think about it, you'll, you'll probably say, me too. I mean, it, it, bars are disgusting. So um, I, know, I know people that work in bars and rely on tips, they're hurting. But... Um, I, I think places that don't have food, like I, I, if, if you got a full menu, God bless you, open up. I don't care if you're a bar. If you got a full menu, I think you should be allowed to open up, just like a restaurant. Um, but the, these dive bars, you know that you know the dive bars that um, they don't have a kitchen. They sell like they, they sell like chips and pretzels. You know the places I'm talking about. They might have peanuts. Those places, those places should not open up. Um, those places are germ factories. You know, you got the old hag behind the bar with a smoke in her mouth. Ah, what can I get you, love? Ah. So, I don't know. I don't know what the, what a good formula would be. Like maybe if. Restaurants, um, to qualify to open up, maybe 50% or better of your receipts need to be from food. Because if, if, if less than, if less, if less than 50% of your till comes from food, you're basically just a drinking hole. And I don't, I don't think we need to open those up right now. And I know some people are going to say, fuck you, Jay, it's America, we need a drink, and yeah, whatever. 
Um, because I know I'm not going to go to a dive bar right now. I mean, I say that now. I'd probably Uber to one later if I could find one. Um, but when you're using proper judgment, you know that the places you don't want to go right now are dive bars, concerts, and sporting events. It's just unnecessary. Bars are gross. Piss everywhere. Yeah, but piss is actually fucking healthy. Ugh. Yeah, think you, you guys have all been to those bars. Well, not all of you guys, but you know like those bars where, where they actually have a bowl of pretzels or a bowl of peanuts on the bar? And like you put your hand in there, grab some pretzels. The guy next to you puts his hand in there, grabs a bit some pretzels that shit's got to stop that's just disgusting community snacks at a fucking bar no 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 we need common sense to prevail and i i'm not for government regulation i'm 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 pretty much libertarian like i'd like the government to just stay out of our fucking way um but so but a, a rule or a law making it illegal to have fucking a, a little bowl of fucking Cheetos on the bar, that wouldn't be a bad law. You shouldn't have community snacks on a bar. That That's wrong. Um, but I, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe we should not, maybe the libertarian side of me says, you know what? We don't need that law. We all have free will. You want to stay alive? You don't grab the peanuts off the bar. And you let the people that eat the peanuts off the bar get sick and let them die. And then you have less retarded people in the world. I mean, there's the flip side to that coin. But there's some good people that aren't very smart. And they don't deserve to die. You know what I mean? They, Buffet's got to go, too. Yeah, it's going to be a while before I trust a buffet. Definitely. Um, yeah, buffets are disgusting. Um, I've gotten sick a couple of times from a buffet. Um, and I'll tell you what, the majority of the time were my fault. Because... I love Asian buffets, um, so so please don't confuse what I'm about to say as being racist because I love Asian buffets. Um, but every time I've gotten sick at an Asian buffet, it's because I was stupid and I got sushi off a buffet, which is really, really retarded. Okay, like you can go to an Asian buffet, and it, it, if 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 you just imply one, or, or just have one rule: no sushi. Your odds of getting sick go down by probably, you know, ninety nine percent. Every every time I've gotten sick in an Asian buffet, it's because I had sushi. I think since I gave up, I learned my lesson. Um. I don't think I've gotten sick after an Asian buffet since then. So, I, do we need to make that a law? No, no uncooked fish at Asian buffets? I mean, see, the libertarian side of me says, well, every time you get the government involved, all they're going to do is fuck that up. So why don't we just let common sense prevail and people that are going to keep eating sushi at the Asian buffet, hopefully they get real bad diarrhea and die. There'll be less people breeding that are that stupid. But we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. I, I just think that um, there's going to be, when we start to reopen this economy, there's going to be people claiming that this isn't fair. Well, life's not fair. Um, 
you know, healthy people want to get back in the gym. Um, but we don't need your dive bar open, you know, with peanuts on the fucking bar. It's, and I'm a drinker, so don't think I'm prejudiced against bars. But these dive bars that don't offer food, you, you are not essential to this economy. If, if, if all you serve is booze and beer and wine, I don't care if you are the last business to open up. Um, you know, if you got a kitchen and, and, and you, you got a you got a burger and you got fries and you got a chicken sandwich and, and, and maybe you do some jalapeno poppers or some deep fried mushrooms, you know, the, the kind of bars that, you know, they basically got a grill and they got a fryer. Let them open up. At least someone can go in there and get a burger and fries. I'm not saying you got to have salads and all sorts of gay shit. You know, if you got a grill and a fryer and someone can come in there and get some deep fried mozzarella sticks with their beer, give let them open up. So I, I don't know how to determine that. I, you're going to have to look at the receipts. Um, and it, it's going to have to be a percentage of the till. Um, we just can't have places that are just serving booze. Because that, that's where this virus will stay alive. In, in these places that just serve booze. And... and I don't know. I, I just came to mind. What about strip clubs? Like strip clubs, some of them have um, real good food. Um, like Rachel's in West Palm Beach, Florida. The, their buffet is fucking famous, dude. Rachel's is is is, is a top notch steakhouse. So. I, I think if you want to open up a strip club like Rachel's, you can close down their buffet and just ask people, please, you know, you're going to have to order off the menu. And Rachel's has good fucking food. Um, that's, that's the thing. Not every strip club is, is just some piece of shit where douchebags go. I mean, there, there's strip clubs that are, that are like, practically four star restaurants. I'm not going five. I'm saying four. Because I know for a fact there's strip clubs where, where they're more they're also like a steakhouse. And there's strip clubs where you can get a steak that's every good every bit of good is um, Ruth Chris or fucking Morton's or one of the other popular um, steakhouses. So, I, you know, where are we at with strip clubs opening back up? I mean, yeah, shut down their buffets. Yeah, and, and cruise lines. You would have to be a moron to get on a cruise anytime soon. And you would, you would have to be a moron to get on an airplane anytime soon. Because, you know, airplanes, when, when, when you're at 35,000 feet, that air is getting recycled, okay? Like, I don't care if it goes through a HEPA filter or whatever they, whatever they have on board. Um, it's not like you're going to be breathing someone else's dandruff or pubic hairs, but you're still breathing the same air that they exhaled. It just went through a HEPA filter. Um and I don't know if I don't know if a HEPA filter can fill. I I don't think it can. I know it filters out allergens, but I don't think it can filter out viruses. Viruses are small. I think I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm a homeless trucker. So now, I I we can't we can't tell the cruise lines you're not allowed to open up. We can't tell the airline industry. In fact, the airline industry is still open for business. You got to be really retarded to get on an airplane right now. 
Um, I mean, if Big J was a fascist dictator, I would tell the cruise lines, you're done. I would tell the airline industry, talk, come talk to me in six months. But I, I, we can't do that. If, if you are stupid enough to get on an airplane, God bless you. It, it's your right, I guess. I, I mean, so I, I don't know. It, it, we, we can't, we got to let, I guess we can't shut down. I just think with, with the power of the internet, when people say they need an airplane for business, technically you don't. But I started thinking about it. Why an airline is essential for business. If you're talking about big deals, and and you're you're an alpha male. Um, you're going to be able to you're going to be able to negotiate a better deal in person. You you want to get on an airplane. You want to sit down with that person you're negotiating with. You, the minute you do that on a computer screen, you 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 level the playing fields with the betas. Okay, the beta males, the cucks. Like, think about think about our president Donald Trump. Before he became president, was he, he was a businessman. Trump's a pretty big dude. I think he's like, I think he's like six two, and I know he's overweight, but I think he's like six two, two thirty. I mean, he's a pretty hefty man. If he's gonna negotiate some business deal. Um, to build a fucking casino or a hotel in, in, in fucking wherever, Singapore. You think he wants to do it on a computer screen? Or do you think he wants to hop on his fucking airplane and fucking sit across a fucking table from some little fucking five foot two fucking slant eyed fucking gook? Who, you know, eats pad thai for fucking lunch. Now, power business people need airplanes for profit. It's not essential, but you can negotiate a better deal in person if you're an alpha male. So I don't know about shutting down the airlines. It, it, I don't know. I don't, I'm not negotiating billion dollar deals. I'm just a fucking homeless trucker. So I don't know. But I, I see a lot of things, things that don't even involve me. I, I think, you know, when I'm on the road driving, I think. And I haven't listened to music in, in, in a long, long time. I, I just, I keep my radio on AM. And when I get to a new city, when I start to lose the previous station I was listening to, I hit the fucking scan button. And I go through it all. I, I. I basically listen to two radio stations, Fox News Radio and and Public Radio. And Public Radio is basically a leftist fucking front. <clears throat> but you can't get Fox News Radio everywhere. Um, so I listen to a lot of PBR. So I know what those fuckers are up to. I know how they think. I know everything about them because I listen to it. And I educate myself on how the fucking left thinks. And they're fucked. I think Trump should fucking stop funding PBR. Public fucking radio is is a, is, is basically um, a, a, just pushing the fucking goddamn left-wing agenda. I'm not saying they're socialist. I'm not saying... Um, public radio is, is, is like Bernie Sanders left, but th they're they're all in on it, on whoever is going up against Trump. I mean, these people don't even think Joe Biden is, is impaired, and Uncle Joe is fucking punch drunk. I, I these debates once Joe Biden gets up on stage with Trump are going to be are going to be 
comical to a point, and then they're going to become sad. So I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. XM is the way to go. Yeah, I, I'm just lazy. <sighs> Jay, the conspiracy theorist, scratching taint and smelling his finger. My taint's clean as fuck right now. I, I just got out of the shower after cutting my own hair. And I scrubbed my taint with a soapy washcloth. You could literally lick my taint right now and not smell any poop. But it is early. I mean, give it an hour or two of me sitting here in this chair drinking. It, it'll eventually get a little smelly, but right now it's real clean. You could come over and lick it. Feel real good. Maybe while you're licking my taint, I could... I could stroke it and I could I could launch a load onto your fucking forehead. Then I would I wouldn't let you wipe it off. I'd make you go stand in the corner until it dried. And you had flaky dried cum stuck to your face. Look like the 80s wrestlers, the nasty boys. <sighs> Did you guys see my coronavirus cycle? I, I posted on my main account. There's Chuck E. Cheese Ranch. Um... I think it's, I think, um, I don't think I've trained in 27 days. 27 days. Tomorrow will be four weeks since I've been to the gym. Um, and um, I, dude, guys that went off their cycle because the gym's closed, that's stupid. You can decrease your dosages, but you don't let your hormones crash ever. If you want to know what it looks like to let your hormones crash, take a look at, at, at Andrew Kalura's neck, that skinny little neck that he's got. That That's what happens when you let your hormones crash. During, during, this, during these gym closures, at a bare minimum, you should stay on your TRT, which... It is 200 to 250 milligrams of test a week. Um, now, I, I, I have test 400 blend, which is like a, like an overdose Cestanon. I don't know if you guys ever did the, the old Cestanon 250, but that stuff rocks. Um, I got, I got some T400 blend. Um, it's real good. Um, 200 of it is, is the test decanate. So half of that 400 is in you for a long time. The other 200 is, is you know, propionate, iso cap for, for a fucking tit, whatever. 200 of it is quicker acting esters, and then, and then 200 of it is test decanate. Um, and I'm, I'm doing a CC of DECA a week and a CC of EQ a week which is nothing. I, I'm doing one shot a week. I, I fill up a 3cc syringe with a cc of my test, a cc of DECA, and a cc of EQ because I'm just trying to, to protect my muscle while I'm not training. And other people are like, well, I don't want to waste my gear. What? I, I'm trying to think. What would Yoda, Yoda say? Waste not, gain not. 
there's no such thing as wasting gear, okay? As long as you're doing it. I guess it would be a waste if you threw it out the window or smashed your vial with a hammer. That would be a waste of gear. But if you're pinning it into your buttocks, by definition, you're not wasting it. Now, I, I'm doing a, I'm doing one cc of, of three different things right now. Maybe I'm conserving gear because while while the gyms are closed, I don't really need more than one cc of test a week. I mean, you don't really need all that extra aggression. What are you going to do? Go fight people? I mean. Basically, test is, is good for your dick, and it's, it's good for improved aggression in the gym. And then your anabolics work together with that to help you build muscle. But, you know, so that's why I try and include EQ in all my cycles and stay on EQ pretty much year-round. A CC of EQ, I don't care what cycle you're doing, what you're training for, what your goals are. How isn't CC of EQ going to affect that? It's just going to make it better. Like, and so the way I'm thinking of it, if I'm just doing one CC a test a week, that's like doing TRT. Even though mine's a little overdosed, I'm doing 400. Technically, if I was doing TRT, I would I would do a CC of sipping a 250. <clears throat> So I'm doing my TRT, right? So my hormones don't crash. And then I added the, the CC of DECA because for those of you guys that don't have a lot of experience with DECA, I mean, DECA is the best at, at, at keeping your muscle while you're not training. Everyone talks about how great Trent is, and, and Trent is strong. Don't get me wrong. But if you're in a period of time where you want to preserve muscle, there is nothing better than DECA, period. Period. And then, then I... I just because I can afford it, I throw in a CC of EQ. What's it going to hurt? E EQ basically has an androgen rating of 50% of testosterone. Which, so it's basically has zero side effects except um, increased red blood cells. But I just gave a double red cell donation. So my hemoglobin is fine. So adding EQ... To, to my test and DECA to, to try and keep my, my muscle while, while the gyms are closed, it's not hurting anything. It's just one cc of EQ. If it helps a little, it helps a little. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Who cares? It's not wasting gear. No such thing as wasting gear. Now, maybe... You know, if, if I was pounding some Anadrols or some D-Balls right now while the gyms are closed, you know, maybe I should, should save those for when the gym opens back up. I could make better use of them. I would agree with that, but I still wouldn't be wasting them. I'm still taking them. It's not like I threw them out. No such thing as wasting gear as long as you take it. That's my COVID-19 gym closure cycle. One cc of test, one cc of DECA, one cc of equipoise. Three cc's a week. Just a little treat, you know. Oh, fuck. This, this hotel room rocks. Mm. You guys got to see my bathroom. Big J got the handicapped room. 
with the walk-in shower. Handrails around the toilet. Phone in case I fall down. Oh. I, uh, yeah, I love the handicapped bathrooms in hotel rooms. Fuck yes. Ugh. Hope I didn't film my cock. <clears throat> I wasn't really watching what I was doing. Ugh. Damn, I'm only on my third beer and I'm pretty buzzed. <clears throat> Jay, what are your thoughts on SARMs and natural steroids? <gasps> I don't think I've ever taken a SARM. Do you take any AIs? Um, yeah. Um, I take, um, uh, Arimidex sometimes, and, um, shit, what's the other one? But, dude, bear, dude on 400 milligrams of test a week, you don't need AIs, Okay. Um, AIs are not good for you at all. If your boobs aren't bothering you, like if you don't have an itch, you don't need AI. Um, keep them on hand, okay? Like, um... Because you want to have, you don't, you don't want to wait till your titties are itching. Because a couple of days of itching, then it becomes swollen and painful. You want to be able to take an AI right away. But even on a massive cycle, you still only need to take AI twice a week. Um, I, I think before, before people got really educated on AIs, myself included, um, we all took way too much. Um, you're, you're, a little bit of estrogen isn't bad. It's natural. Um, you want a little bit of estrogen. So my theory on AIs is take as very little as you can get away with. Um, now, obviously... If, if you're competing for a bodybuilding contest and you're trying to get peeled as fuck, um, you're going to use more AIs than you really need because you, you don't want any water retention. But that, that's a drastic, drastic situation. Um, for, your, for your average fucking um, meathead that just likes to do gear and go to the gym and have fun, um, have some AIs on hand and then just use them as needed. That's it. Don't go crazy. Oh. I think you only need like one milligram twice a week. Yeah, something like that. Diet affects estrogen so much. The right diet and AI isn't that necessary at 500 milligrams or less. Yeah. Dude. If you're doing, like, legitimate TRT, um... 250 milligrams of test sipionate a week. I don't even think you need AI, but I would have it on hand because if you get that little booby itch, it, you take a milligram of, of Rimidex or whatever you like to take. What about Kaber when on trend? Not needed? Well, here's my thing with, with Kaber. Kaber is extremely bad for your heart. So, 
the only time I would, if I was doing, and, and trend doesn't cause water retention, and getting bitch tits from trend is, 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 Trend doesn't seem to affect my nipples, um, so I can't speak for everybody. But so so I would never ever consider taking Caber on Trend, um, un, un, unless my dick wasn't working and I had some hot pussy lined up. Because if if you're not retaining water, and your nipples are okay. Dude, you've got to suffer the side effects of the trend. You know, if, if getting as big as possible and doing a show is, is important to you, um, sometimes you got to give up pussy. So if you get trend dick, you, you want to do caber so that you, you, can, you can fuck? Dude, I, dude do your research on caber. It's really bad. Um, I think it causes, um, causes, it can cause, um, damage to the valves. So it, it, it can lead up to ventricular heart failure. Um, so if I'm doing trend and I'm, I'm not water bloated, my, my nipples are fine. Why would I take caber? I'm going to I'm going to risk heart failure for a woman. If if you're willing to risk heart failure for a woman, get the fuck out of here. Get off my live and go fuck yourself. In fact, go drive your truck off of or your car into a fucking telephone pole. You don't risk heart failure for a woman. Um, now, a little bit of caber is okay, and you got to be really careful, really careful. Um, I, I have caber. Do I use it? No. Um, I'm on DECA right now, um, and I'm able to still get an erection masturbating on DECA without taking caber. So... Now let's just say I, I was gonna. Get, I knew I was gonna get some pussy. Um, yeah, maybe I might do a little caber. You know, just for confidence. Um, but dude, I'm not gonna do caber with my cycle. With without a reason, and. and for me, steady pussy is not a reason. Like, if, if if your girlfriend doesn't want you to be big and grow, don't do Decker or Trent. Because you can get big without Decker or Trent. So, the risks of, of doing caber to your heart, just so you can do Decker and Trent, and keep your girlfriend or wife happy at the same time. That 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 just is, doesn't make sense. That that that's you're chasing fool's gold, brother. You know, give up the deca or trend, and and just do some EQ. So you don't need the caber. If if if, if giving the old lady dick, it's that important to you. If giving the old lady dick is that important to you, you don't need to be doing Trent or Deca. Because Trent Caber is just not good for your heart. Now, maybe if you're training for the Olympia or the Arnold or somewhere where you could win a couple hundred grand, yeah, do some Caber. You might win a couple hundred grand. But dude, no piece of pussy is worth a couple hundred grand. Think about it that way. Dude, I'm 51 years old. 
you know, pussy is, pussy isn't. It, it's okay. It's great. I love it. But I'm not going to do caber and, and, and give myself heart disease so I can fuck. That's stupid. But do I have caber in the house? Absolutely. But I've never had a problem with bitch tits on trim. Um, see, there's basically three popular compounds that can give you bitch tits. Um, the AI won't help you. And they're DECA trend which are both NOR-19 derivatives, and Anadrol. Um, so, if you're going to do a show, well, most people nowadays don't, don't do pre-contest um, on DECA or Drawl, but you could. Trust me, you could. I think... Um, so most people pre-contest, the only reason they would be taking caber would be because they're on trend. But you're not going to gain water off trend. So unless you're prone to gynecomastia on trend, I don't even know if I would, I, I don't even know if I would take caber doing a show. Plenty of people do shows on trend. And don't get bitch shits. So, I don't know. Just make, make better choices. You know? If you want to bulk in the off-season, and you don't want to do caber, um, choose D-ball instead of Anadrol. Choose Equipoise instead of Tren or Deca. All comes down to what's important to you, brah. Dude, I don't want heart failure. I'm, I'm not willing to risk heart failure to please a woman. Not going to do it. Won't have it. But do I have Gaber on hand? Yeah, I, I can show you it. It's right here in front of me in this shoebox. but I don't take it. I'm on DECA right now, and I can still beat off like a motherfucker. But like I said, I'm only doing one cc of DECA right now a week. So should, should I do some caber so I can beat off better? That's sick. Don't do anything so you can beat off better. I want to beat off better, so I'm going to do some caber. Yeah. Anyway, so just be careful, man. Different things become diff different things become more important to you when you get older. Like, I, I don't want no bitch titty. Um, I, I keep two different kinds of AI on hand, and I have caber on hand. But I barely use any of them. That's the best advice I can give you. All right, this, this is wrapping up here in 22 seconds. I just cracked my fourth beer. Mm.